about an hour ago, I watched the Sergei Kovalev versus John Pascal press conference. And uh, John Pascal is really, really up for it. I mean, those who've watched the build-up to this fight know that there has been um, a lot of complaints by John Pascal about racism leading up to the fight, uh, specifically with comments and tweets from Sergei Kovalev relating to Adonis Stevenson, uh, Ismail Salak, and John Pascal himself. You know, and Pascal was getting really irate during this press conference. You know, he he's not here to play. Um, he was calling out Sergei Kovalev's trainer, John David Jackson, who's a uh, you know obviously a black guy, and he was calling him out, saying uh, he should be ashamed for training and supporting a guy like Sergei Kovalev, who was. Uh, so racist, you know, he produced a, a bag of bananas during the press conference and proceeded to eat one because that's what uh, Sergei Kovalev was supposedly insinuating um, when he was using words and images um, of monkeys to uh, describe black fighters. I think he posted a photo of a, a monkey or a gorilla of some sort against the Adonis Stevenson. And, you know, John Pascal um, was really, really irate, and he looked really, really up for this fight. Now, a lot of people on Twitter, a lot of people on social media have the opinion that because the first fight was a, um, a decisive win for Sergei Kovalev, John Pascal is using the, uh, the racism story, if you like, to hype the fight, because there would be limited interest in a rematch without it, due to the fact the first fight was so one-sided. Now, I don't know about that, um, you know, it's not something for me to comment on. But what I can say is, for me, at this press conference, John Pascal looked in the zone. John Pascal looked like he was coming to, to win. John Pascal looked like he was taking it very, very seriously. Uh, so what I went and did is I re-watched the first fight, because obviously it's slightly hazy in my memory, and what I remember it, being was a spirited performance from John Pascal, but ultimately outboxed by Sergei Kovalev and couldn't live with the power. And I'm trying to work out, having re watched the fight, what John Pascal can do against Sergei Kovalev. Um, now, in the first fight, Roy Jones Jr. was in the corner, and you could see a definite Roy Jones Jr. influence in the performance. The fight for me was almost reminiscent of. You know, it had elements of the David Hay fight against Vladimir Klitschko, with Sergei Kovalev being Klitschko and John Pascal being David Hay. You know, the fight starts off, John Pascal is circling, using a lot of lateral movement, trying to stay out of range of Sergei Kovalev's jab, using a lot of head movement, hands low, uh, you know, shoulder up, hands low, um, trying to change height dynamics, trying to move his head. And trying to stay on the outside, you know, trying to stay out of range of Sergei Kovalev's jab. His intention then to sort of rush in, close the gap, go straight from the outside to close range and throw bombs. You know, John Pascal's not standing there trying to play chess with Sergei Kovalev. He's not trying to work the jab. He's not trying to stand in front of him. He's trying to circle around, ambush him, land the power punts. I kind of detected in that fight that Pascal wasn't really there to outpoints Sergei Kovalev. You know, Pascal is a, an underrated puncher. You know, a lot of people think Pascal is a light puncher. You know, con in contrary, I watched Dwyer's video uh, from some time ago. Dwyer thinks John Pascal is a huge puncher. You know, I'm somewhere in between. I think Pascal's a big enough puncher, um, but I don't think he's as lethal as Dwyer thinks he is. But I think that was Pascal's game plan, really. I didn't see him try to steal rounds with the jab. I saw him circling, trying to stay out of range and trying to find the one big punch to test Sergei Kovalev's chin and see if he could get him out of there. And, uh, you know, all in all, it was a spirited performance, as I say, and Pascal did land some big punches on Kovalev. Three, four times you see him landing a real strong punch to the body. Uh, two, three times I saw him catching Sergei Kovalev on the way in. In the third round, he catches Sergei Kovalev coming in with a sort of lead hook, um, and it's a big, big bomb, you know, it's a big bomb, um, he gave himself that typical puncher's chance in the fight, you know, he landed some big shots on Kovalev, and if Kovalev had had weak punch resistance, he gave himself the chance of winning that fight by knockout, but the difficulty was Kovalev just 
took everything he had so easily, so easily. And uh, in the third round, you see John Pascal land a real big punch on Kovalev's chin. You know, bang on the chin, as Jim Watt would say. And Kovalev just took it and then pulled it on. And, you know, the 15, 20 seconds after John Pascal lands that punch, Kovalev just turns into a monster and uh, drops John Pascal for the third, first time in his career in the third round. You know, after that, from there on in, it became more one-sided to my money. You know, I know John Pascal had moments. People say he won at later rounds. Yeah, that's, that's true. John Pascal was in the fight. But from that moment on, he'd been hurt. And uh, you kind of got the sense that he knew he'd been hurt. And it was only a matter of time before Kovalev closed the show, which he, he did in the sort of mid-rounds. Um, and you know what? I know Sergei Kovalev possibly isn't the most popular fighter. He's not the most charismatic. Uh, his comments, tweets are very, very questionable. Actually, no, they're not questionable. They're the wrong side of questionable. But if we put all of that to one side, if we take away the personality and focus not on the individual, but on pure sporting achievement and on boxing capability, Sergei Kovalev is actually a dramatically underrated fighter. There's an argument that Sergei Kovalev should be pound for pound number one in the world. And it's actually quite a convincing argument when you get into it. Uh, his resume is real, real strong. You know, I don't want to turn this video into a rant about Golovkin and his opposition, but there's so much hype around Gennady Golovkin. I don't understand why the hype isn't around Sergei Kovalev. Kovalev's just as big a puncher. And Kovalev's resume is... Yeah, Kovalev's resume in the context of world boxing is superb. Yeah, Bernard Hopkins, and not just beating Bernard Hopkins, the manner with which he beat Bernard Hopkins. Nobody's done that to Bernard Hopkins. My favourite fighter of all time, Joe Calzaghe, couldn't do that to Bernard Hopkins. You know, John Pascal, you know, a top, top light heavyweight, proven quality. Um, you know, there's loads of other names Sergei Kovalev's taken on. I'm a huge Nathan Cleverly fan, and again... Beating Nathan Cleverly, you know, it's not the biggest achievement in the world. Lesser fighters have beaten Nathan Cleverly. But it was the manner with which he's beaten Nathan Cleverly. You know, Nathan Cleverly, iron jaw, one of the strongest chins you'll see. Look at the punches he took from uh, Andre Fanfara and went the distance. Sergei Kovalev just had the power to completely turn that fight on his head and destroy Nathan Cleverly. Who, don't forget, at the time, was an undefeated world champion with several defences fighting on home turf. You know, Sergei Kovalev is the real deal. He is the real, real deal. A top, top boxer. And he is complete. You know, he has got an iron chin. He has got great boxing fundamentals. And he's pound for pound one of the biggest punches in the sport. How do you beat Sergei Kovalev? That is the difficulty. Um, John Pascal fought the last fight on... A low output, moving fight, hopeful of getting a knockout punch. It didn't work. And if he fights the same tactics again, I would anticipate the fight will go the same way. Pascal's got a great chin, but nobody can take the punishment he was taking for 12 rounds. He was getting caught. Once Sergei got that jab going... And he started working power punches off the jab. <sighs> you know, it was in real trouble. Once Sergei got him hurt and was able to push forward on the front foot and unload, the fight was coming to a close. And the difficulty is, how do you come up with the game plan to beat Sergei Kovalev? And I, sitting here, don't have an easy answer to that question. For me, Kovalev was beating Pascal up on the inside. He was out jabbing him massively on the outside. Uh, he seems to have an iron chin. He's probably the more refined boxer. It's hard really to say that Pascal has anything other than a puncher's chance. It really is. Now, the one change Pascal has made, he's left He's left Roy Jones Jr. And he's sided with Freddie Rhodes. Now, whilst Roy Jones Jr. is a great person within the sport. I just feel that the Roy Jones tactics weren't effective against Kovalev. 
Freddie Roach is a fighter, a, a trainer known for working with aggressive fighters, known for coming up with aggressive game plans, getting his fighters to unload a bit more. And that could represent a different mentality. If you look at Kovalev and Pascal physically, Pascal looks like the far more bulky, stronger individual. You know, Kovalev is, is taller, rangier, slightly leaner. Um, whereas Pascal is built like a bull, isn't he? You know, real strong, but you know, physique looks like an extremely powerful guy. You'd guess that he has a slight edge in strength over Sergei Kovalev. Now, maybe Freddie Roach is going to think it's time to roll the dice here. There's no point hanging around for eight, nine rounds hoping something happens because it didn't last time. Maybe that's going to be the game plan. You know, put the pedal to the metal. Charge Sergei down, throw absolute bombs, don't be worrying about head movement from the outside, don't be worrying about staying out of range, force the pace, try and get Sergei on his back foot, try and smash him up to the body, you know, and see what happens. Roll the dice. Um, and I think Pascal's going to have to roll the dice here, because if he uses the same technique as last time, he's going to lose. If he tries to jab it out with Sergei Kovalev, he's going to get destroyed. Um, so he's going to have to roll the dice. But I'm glad it's Freddie Roach, not I, who is uh, coming up with the tactics. Because for me, Kovalev wins this fight easily. And even though Pascal performed with immense credit and had spells of effectiveness in the last fight, can I see him knocking out Sergei Kovalev? Can I see him outworking, outboxing, outpointing him over 12 rounds? Absolutely not. I'm going for Sergei Kovalev and I'm going to say that he actually gets Pascal out of there sooner than he did last time, quicker, you know. I think Pascal's going to have to roll the dice, which will give him a chance. Don't rule John Pascal completely out, but I can't see him doing it in reality. I think Pascal's going to have to throw course into the wind and I think he gets knocked out. Fourth round, fifth round, sixth round, something of that nature. Let me know your thoughts on this fight. Let me know your thoughts on the build up. What tactics would you employ if you were John Pascal? Is Sergei Kovalev as high up in the pound for pound rankings as I have him? Can you see an upset? Let me know your thoughts. If you've enjoyed this preview, please click the thumbs up button, support the channel. Also, be very grateful if you hit the subscribe button. I wouldn't want you to miss out on the post fight review I do of this fight uh, after the weekend. Thanks for watching.